Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to talk about next query builder. So as you as you already know I'm talking about Nest.js with the different ORMs in the module 2 of this Nest.js advanced series. So in this playlist we are talking about module 2 which is all about how we are doing integrations with uh, different ORMs to work with the different database. Like I have a Nest.js wants to connect, wants to use this next query builder and wants to use MySQL, Postgres or different SQL database. Or I have a Nest.js application where I want to use, I want to use SQLize and I wanted to con connect to the MySQL, uh, Postgres or any other SQL database. Or I do have a MongoDB. How do I work with the Nest.js? So all those concepts we are covering in end-to-end -end applications. Let's try to first explore the Next. Next is really nice query builder and I have used Next with the Express app. I mean, it's very lightweight. You don't need to do a lot to set up. And even when you are doing uh, different operations, joins and all, the Next provide a really nice query builder. So I will just uh, try to go through it and we will then we will just talk about Nest.js with the Next. So this is an X. Next is actually a query builder, not a full blown ORM. What I mean to say is like uh, when you talk about type ORM, SQLize, Prisma, they are pure ORM based uh, libraries, but it's more about a uh, query builder. And you can work with the Postgres, SQLite, MySQL, MySQL 2, Oracle DB, and uh, there are Cockroach DB and some other database also. So you can run this. So this is how you will initialize the client because like you have a Prisma client, you have a type ORM uh, repository. Similarly, there is a next client. With the help of that, you will be able to access these tables. So next also provides the migrations. I mean, you can write a simple migration files and you can populate those tables into the actual uh, database instance. But this is how you are connecting the client name, maybe a Postgres, and the connection will be the details. You can have a, just a one single URL like the URL. So this is a connection string, right? So you don't need uh, the big all these variables because uh, every database also provides a connection URL which contains the host, port, username, uh, password, and the database name. So you can pass that uh, connection string also. So this is how you will actually initialize your database. So if you want to use a SQLite, then that's a simplest way because SQLite is a database, file based database. And this is how you will just specify the path. Client is SQLite. And if you want to just use a in memory, then you can just use a call and memory. Okay, and how you are going to define the migrations and all that's very simple uh, we will talk about it so this is how you are initializing the connections so this is for postgres right and uh, for aurora db next aurora db which is aws aurora that is also there so we are just specifying the resource yarn and security yarn and that is simply will work like this now the important part is let's say I have already the database connections, right? Now I'm more interested in knowing what uh, this uh, Next is providing me, right? Uh, like how we are doing the transactions, how I'm doing uh, simple queries and all. That's important, and it's very simplified. I mean, you can just you can just see the syntax. It's uh, Next dot select these many columns from books. So it's like really nice uh, query builder. It is selecting all the columns from the books, selecting the ID from the user. So selecting, so this is how, I mean, you can also use it with the TypeScript. You just need to define the types. Interface, I mean, you just create an interface classes, interface for your database entities, and then you can specify it like this. Okay, so I mean, you can write a uh, complex queries also, not uh, just a simple one. Like uh, these are the columns you are selecting from the books. These are the columns. So what we are doing here is give me all the columns from the users. 
but uh, then there are uh, other queries also which you can write i will talk about that so the, the, this is really a nice query builder which contains lots of things like there is simple where clause what it is doing is uh, from the user's table uh, give me the data with only id where first name is this and last name is this right so it's like a simple query give me the data from the users where id equal to this or where not in so it's all about how uh, we are writing a queries so these are the where clause that has been added with and so if i look into this left column i can also see the joins right that is important because we uh, do need these joins sometimes right so i am just doing a join with the user with the context and this is the condition that user dot id should be able to should be equal to the contact dot user id, right? And select the user dot id and contact dot phone. So I mean I I will not uh, dive much into the documentation. I mean migrations are also important and how we do the migrations. So it also uses the the migration CLI. Okay, so if I talk about you need to have a first environment configurations and then uh, you just define the, your migrations, which is somewhat like this. Up and down, it contains two sections, uh, schema dot uh, create table. So in the up sections, you will just do the create operations. Like I need to create a table, I need to create a, a alternate table column, and in the down sections, you will just drop sentence, drop the column. Or the drop the table, right? And uh, this is how you will manage the transactions. You will just write these files, and when you apply these migrations, the database changes will be applied to the database. Okay. I mean, if you want to talk about transactions, this also we can do. So transactions means you can you will initialize the transactions, and then based on the transactions, you will start doing the performing the operations like this is a transaction transactions dot commit transactions dot rollback so in in between that whatever the operations you are doing that will be considered a part of transaction okay let's see this in the in the in the respective to nest js okay now let's take a look into the code and try to understand this so this is our nest js project okay i just i wanted to talk about a simple example uh, not very complex stuff. So here I do have an X file like ormconfig.ts you have. Similarly, there is a, a simple file, next file. And next file contains the configurations for different environments. Like for testing, you can use this. For the local, you can use this. I mean, the configuration is kind of similar. We are using client Postgres, connection URL, migration directory, and seed directory. But this is how you will write next file. And from this, you can get this object based on your environment variable. So what I will do is I will set this environment variables node env local. And also I can set this uh, database URL in the export so that I can access that using process.env. Okay. And then I can just simply do is npm run migration make. So in the migration, there are different steps. You need to create a empty migrations. Then you need to apply the migration all those things so uh, uh, here i have a script that is somewhat uh, simple node modules next we are using and here we are running migration make, migrate make migrate uh, latest migrate rollback my seed make seed run right so if i talk about uh, db migrate make means i want to write a uh, new migrations can you create a new migration for me so this is how i will just execute a script and it will create this migration file. Now you need to fill the this migration file with your data. And you can see the migration file uh, definition is inside source migration and this is a new migration. And here you can specify do you want to create a new table. Let's say I want to create a new table. So I can just do is something like this. And then I can use this same thing drop table because in the down statement, if any, anything fails, then I will drop this table. So 
So let's say I'm just creating this uh, new table with these set of columns. So if you can see table.string, table.text, table.boolean, all these things are available. So in the table API, I think because table we are not using as a next table. It should be, so we, we need to take care of the types which we are using here. So that we can get all the things table dot uh, dates so all these types are there you can see table dot bool boolean column i can introduce okay let's say i want to have a boolean table is deleted dot not nullable because this is the boolean not nullable and and here you can say default two is deleted false right so now this is the migration i have created now i want to apply the migration so i can just choose another command which is db migrate run so that will be executed against database and you can see batch one three migrations has been applied right so it's like a simple steps you create a tables you write a migrations and then you apply the migrations through the pipeline or uh, here we are playing through the terminal so this is how we are applying the migrations and you can also apply the seeds let's say i have this seed which is updating putting things inside a user's table right so i can run the seeds go to package json and you can also do seed make and seed run tb what it will do it will just look into this users.ts and it runs the seed file so it has populated the data inside your user table. That's all about like how we are creating tables, how we are creating a uh, empty migrations and how we are running the migrations. Now, how actually we will do the integration. So you already remember that in the nest JS, you need to have a database module to access the database. And here we do have database URL and I'm using Postgres here. So if you see this, this is my environment variable, local is the environment and this is my, uh, you can say database that I am using here. So for that what I can use is, I will just update my DB module. So this is like a same folder structure and same code. I haven't changed anything. Here I am just using this DB module. So the only thing which I am changing here is this. So type is Postgres, database URL, keep connection alive. Here I'm just changing how I am getting the database configurations. So we already have this next file. I will import it and I, I will pass the environment variable like process.node.env because next file is providing the configurations for different uh, environment environments like for testing, for local, for production. So we just need to pass this object, this object to our next client. So if you see DB module is all about passing this config options inside config. And then finally, what we are doing is because here also we are using this uh, module next module with the nest JS nest next JS. So this is actually a module you can use if you want to, uh, if you want to play around with this next, this is an NPM module. Uh, which is there and you can just do a simple testing for with this so next nest js and how we are initializing the connection is so that it is providing both the methods for root and for root async so here inside a config you are providing the client connections and all connection is memory based and here for root async that means we are dependent on the some config service populating all these values and this is how you will be accessing the uh database tables right uh here like this dot next dot table user dot insert update delete so we are using this version of it next module dot for root async and if you see in my code we are doing the same thing next module dot for root async and we are getting things from the config module means the dynamic module options and this is the get connection options and this is returning with this object this is what i need what is the connection name what is the config object config object is this thing 
which contains the next file configuration, right? So if you see config options are based on the environment variable, it will give you the whole object that becomes your config, which contains your connection URL and uh, migrations and seed directories and all, which you can pass. So now this whole object becomes the next module connection options, which we are passing here. And that's it. It is giving us uh, whatever we need. So this is the database module. Once you initialize it, you should start consuming. You can inject the next service inside your uh, components, inside your controllers, and you can start accessing these data tables. So after that rest part is easy because now, because we are using a next module. So if you look into the, the main module, here we are using domain module. Inside domain module, we are adding okay, db module dot for root. I mean, we I I have designed my own custom database module where I'm calling for root. And inside, if you see the for root, for root is nothing but a method which is initializing this next module with the factory pattern. I mean, it we are injecting config module and config service from config service we are getting uh, the environment variables and database URLs and all. That's it. So here, now if I wanted to access the data, so controller is simple. I didn't do any rocket science. It's just like a create user, update user, delete user, some CRUD operation just for the showcase. And here I'm doing create. So what create will do? Create needs to create a user and it needs to have an access to the database. So this inject model, like in the type ORM, we have a repository pattern and all. We do repositories and get the repository instance and then this dot user report dot save and all we were doing. Similarly, here we have inject model, which will give us access to the next. And from this next, we can get the instance of any table, user table, user test table, uh, any table, whatever the tables you have in the system. So, I mean, that's nice. You don't need to create a separate repositories for each and every table. It's like you, once you get the next, it's a global object and you can get the access to any tables exist in the system. And I got the user. So these are just a simple query operations like insert, find. Here I'm doing a table dot where close. Give me this data. I mean, where this equal to this and update these parameters. Remove is simple. This dot next dot table where ID equal to this dot delete. So, I mean, I'm not talking about the query builder and all these operations, but it's just like a simple CRUD operation. Delete, find, uh, I mean, get, delete, update, insert, update, delete. So, this is how we are creating dot insert. This is how we are getting it dot update based on where close and this is how we are deleting it. So, next is overall simplified. I, I will say we don't need to deal with uh, complex stuff. You just need to be nice at the query builder and you can do join, you can do anything uh, with the next rest. I mean, how to use next queries, because once you get the access to this, this dot next dot table, you can write anything after it based on whatever the query you have, you have created uh, from the query builder. Okay, so this is all about, I can just try to run this application and show you how it really works. So here I'm running my project. There were some small build errors, which I fixed. And then I'm able to run this application. And uh, actually, you need to look into the code, like on which uh, endpoint it is exposing the documents. So here I can see this is the base path, API v1. Swagger module dot setup. Swagger module is set up on this API v1. So I go to the API v1. And this is what it is, Nestjs template. And here I can just check the health. Looks good. And here I can just try to fetch all the list of users, which I did seed because we already seeded this data. And this is the users. Now I don't know like what is in the request body. I need to check in the payload like what we are passing. I can just copy and paste these parameters and see if it works. I can remove the ID because that is auto generated. Internal server error. We always do something wrong. 
okay so there is something unique you need duplicate violet uh, constraint user primary key so i think there is something unique let's uh, make them unique okay so api users what is this duplicate key value uh, while it's unique key constraint i think it's trying to generate a id and id is already there as a one that may be the possibility so what i can do is we can just generate uh, because here is the migrations and this is the user okay this is auto incremented id okay so while doing an insert operation so we need to make sure that we are not uh, inserting the same id so that's why i always prefer having uuids or cuids in the database because we can generate those uuids and cuids and can insert okay so this is auto incrementing the ids i can also check in the database i think maybe i didn't restart the application that's why it was behaving like this because increasing the ids is the responsibility of the database orm right because we are doing insert and if the id is auto incremented it should keep appending 1 2 3 4 5 6 so here this is how i'm inserting that it's just like uh, we need to make sure that we are not duplicating the email and we will get the the values out of it so this is how we are creating a users and then we are fetching the list of the users here which will give me the big list so it's just like a simple CRUD operations which I was talking about and this is how you will play with the next migration seeders and the database connections with the nest JS. Okay, I mean it's like a really plain and simple APIs you can play around with this. I will share this particular code uh, and this is how we are initializing the database connections and putting all the migrations. Okay, so that's it about uh, next. Now next we are going to talk about SQLize. And that's it. After that, what after that? I'm going to build end-to-end -end application with MongoDB. So in MongoDB, we are going to use a type goose and uh, how we are going to interface with the MongoDB with the multiple collections. So in the in the next case, I haven't worked on any project where I have uh, multiple collections and associating the relationships in the next JS project. So let's say uh, I have a user, blog, post, comments, reviews and associating their relationships and doing a read and write operations from that. So that's the, the, the final target. And with that also we will cover the module 3 which is all about covering the test cases. How we are writing the test cases for the services, controllers, some middlewares, auth guards, whatever we are writing in the next years.